The phrase, who knit you, is just a, a way of asking, who are your parents, or where are you from? But rather than ask the direct question, uh, you find an indirect way of, of asking it, and so you would say, well, who knit you? Now, the battery got its name from the fact that it was a battery of defense that has kept St. John's Harbor safe since the 1700s. It's also a small fishing community that was very, very important to the lives of about 20 to 25 families. We had a tiny outpour community right in the middle of the city of St. John's. I remember when I was eight, I used to take fish and uh, get my Rodney and row up to the War Memorial, scale up over the side of the wharf, sell the fish, but I couldn't wait to get back aboard that Rodney and row back. The battery will always be part of my blood. The term best kind can be used in a number of ways. It can describe satisfaction in something, you know. You're so completely full, it's been the best meal you've had in a long time, that was the best kind of meal. And of course, after that meal, you got to do the dishes because the kitchen is in the best kind of a mess. Nobody knows for sure how Bacon Cove got his name. My favorite story, though, is what the old fellas used to tell you when you're growing up around here. There was that great big ship. She come in, she was laden down with pigs. And there was that great big December gale come in and quick as a wink, toppled over the ship, mast first down the water. Pigs going everywhere, squealing. You could hear them from miles around. And all the settlers come out, and they grab the pigs and haul them ashore. And what are you going to do with all those pigs in the winter? That's how the tastiest little community in all of Newfoundland and Labrador got its name. Got Foundered would usually be used to describe your state of hunger at the end of the day. You're starved to death. Is it going to be takeout? Is it going to be pizza? Uh, what do I have home in the fridge? What is in the car? What's in the glove box? What might be under the seat? Everything is delicious when you're gut foundered. Stale bread is artisan loaf. Half a chocolate bar in a glove box is like, is straight from a Belgian delicatessen. Utensils get discarded or ignored. Unless, of course, it's soup. Well, even then, you know, the bowl goes straight to the mouth. It's just a... There's probably more theories about how Garnish got its name than there are people living in town. My favorite theory is that some of the original settlers came from a place called Garnish Island in County Cork in Ireland. And when they got here, it was as if someone had grabbed Garnish Island up by the scruff of the neck and just plucked it up and slapped it down on the Buren Peninsula. And there it was. If you think of the Buren Peninsula as a plate of food, then you've got places like Marystown and Buren that would probably be the meat. Uh, Winterland would be the veggies. They are a farming community. They're a landlocked, beautiful place. Fortune would be the gravy. They add flavor to the whole thing. But we are the garnish. We are that sprig of parsley. A brewer is a day of nice, calm weather before a stormy day. The storm is brewing. Your pets are on edge uh, during a brewer. There's an edge to, to everything. First glance, it looks great. Maybe even the sun's out. It might be beautiful. Brewer is a word that's almost always used in the past tense. That was a brewer. Because you could say this is a brewer, but you might be proved wrong. So, and nobody likes that. So the Bloomington Mountains, the name kind of says it all. It can be calm, beautiful day, and the next minute, wind can be blowing in four different directions. We had a guy sailing around the world one time, an Englishman, and he decided he was going to use our marina as his last stop before his voyage home. We waited. He didn't show up. The evening started to come. We started to get worried, thought maybe he'd changed his mind. Eventually, we did see his sails on the horizon, and he was clenching the wheel. He was almost passed out from exhaustion. So we pried his fingers off the wheel, and he collapsed into our arms. He said, I've sailed around the world three times. I've been around the Horn of Africa. I have been across the South Pacific. I've been through typhoons, through hurricanes. I thought I'd seen it all until I got here. This is the Blomidens. It's just the way it is. 
See, the very first fisherman that came in this harbor was actually lost in the fog. When he finally broke out of the fog, he was almost on that rock there. And what should he see but a beautiful mermaid combing her long, black, beautiful hair. You go in that harbor, and first brook on your left, you'll find your fortune. And he found the brook, and I suppose he had a buried treasure in his mind, but he didn't find that. But what he did find was lots of fresh drinking water, brooks teeming with trout, lots of good hunting in the hills nearby, and he settled here, and he fished to his heart's content, and he hunted to his heart's content, and I suppose he did everything else to his heart's content. And that's how the place got its name. The inevitable question is, who needs you?